Welcome back to the Sibling Squabble Podcast. My name's Isaac. I'm Sayla. And this is the podcast where we answer your prompts about growing up, relationships, faith, and pop culture. Um, Sayla, are you excited to be back? I'm so excited. Of course you are, because we've been gone for so long. Everyone's like, where's the podcast? We love the podcast. Where is it? That's exactly how all your fans sound. Every On every one of my videos now, everyone's like, we're a sibling squabble. We hate this other content. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> we don't we don't like this guy. Where's the girl? Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I've ruined my channel. This is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're now back in the saddle of the podcast, and we're talking about a lot of different things today mainly fear that's the yeah. theme of today's podcast um have you okay interesting have you ever seen the show fear factor yeah well you, i've heard well i haven't seen like a whole episode but i know what it is okay so uh, what i've done is i have coordinated us to have a, a basically a, a containment um area where you can step in and you will be surrounded by tarantulas Okay, oh. and you're going to see how long you can last in there. Kind of our own fear factor type thing. Oh no. Okay, are you good with this? No. That's... Oh, okay, well, guys, back it up, back it up. Okay, they're leaving, they're leaving. Okay, well, we'll, we'll x nay that for now, but maybe next time. Next time. Okay, okay, well, that's fine. Um, so, <laughs> so in this episode, uh, we're gonna begin with our highs and lows because that's what we do. We like mm -hmm. to talk about our week. We like to get you know a little bit of vulnerability going on here. Yeah. So, uh, say like, can you let us in? What is your we we like to start with the lows, right? Yeah. The lows because you know as it is. So, what's your low for the week? I don't know. I'm gonna skip my low. I really don't. Know. Really? I tried to think of one, like yeah. But... Are you are you having that good of a week? No, I just don't want to stay my low. Oh, okay. Having that bad of a week. Oh, dude. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but it's like, all right. Okay, okay. You don't have to worry. I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. I understand that. But what's your high, though? My high is hanging out with my niece and my other niece. Your nieces? And my older sister. Your nieces and nieces. your older sister. Yes, they are so cute. Um, They're going to be a common theme on the podcast i feel like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like every week it's like what's your favorite highlight of the week you're like my nieces yeah <laughs> i like being with them they're so nice and squishy <laughs> they're, squishy. they're so beautiful their faces <laughs> their hands their little toes they're beautiful they <laughs> you're, like, you're like you're like Gollum, basically <laughs> arriving at hubble's house you're like my precious, my precious. that's how i am <laughs> that's how i am yeah i yeah i'm sure you are you're yeah okay that's good um, my highs and lows for this week. Okay, well, yesterday, um, it's very weird on the YouTube channel because everyone, mm -hmm. what everyone will have just seen is a video of me being very vulnerable and almost on mm. the edge of tears in a particular video. So this is kind yeah. of a switch up. Like, they're like, Isaac, are you okay? <laughs> um, so I'm kind of like, if I'm like, hey, everything's great. <laughs> I'm happy. Then everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? He's well, that's being all right. That's he's all being right. totally fake. But um, I am doing much better today my low i guess was yesterday mm -hmm. um nothing in particular i was just getting so fed up with the restrictions mm -hmm. we it's been a common theme in the podcast hopefully we're on the end of that mm -hmm. talking about that within the podcast but i've been so oh man i just want to see people bro um yeah. i want to go to church i want to live my life yeah. um but then the high was today was shooting some stuff be being on this podcast with you and another high was doing a Zoom call with my patrons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you hear about this? Yes. Oh, you did hear about this? On we Instagram. Oh, well, that's on how we communicate? Because yeah. I was like, we didn't talk about this. So how do you know? Yeah, no, I just uh, watch your Instagram stories. That's how our relationship operates. <laughs> it's just on Like Instagram. I said, guys, he only, he might say hi to me walking in the hall, you basement hallway. You have not hallway. been here. Like, I can, he doesn't. I don't see you. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this because you have not been here for the podcast. Like, I've been trying to schedule in this podcast so many times. But you and haven't always, even told me. That. Yeah, but because I'm always like trying to look for you and try to find you. And then I'm like, oh. Mom's like, oh, problem, she's away. This she's is out. the problem with Isaac. He can't do stuff because he doesn't want to get in people's way. So he tries to work around people yep. that are trying, just waiting for him to ask. Are you saying like, I need to take some more initiative and be a little bit more yeah. assertive in when we should do the podcast? <laughs> so what I'm saying to you then is that we are going to find a specific time that we have to do the podcast and yep. it has to happen and you Pretty have much. to be here because I'm too sick and tired of telling everybody another fake crying on the last uh, podcast. 
podcast. I mean, I feel like first, when I, you I when you want sometimes. people to know it's emotional, but like my, you've bottled up so much <laughs> emotion, so you can't let out real it's ones. So you're just man. like, I gotta fake anyway, the emotion. Uh, anyway, I'm it's like to it's like I've been. Everyone on Instagram is like, oh, we want the podcast back. I'm like, dude, I would shoot. <laughs> oh, we would have five episodes out by now if it weren't for you. <laughs> you <laughs> should just say that on your story. Like, just be like, come on, say like, and then and then she's I'll, a diva. That's how you. That's you don't even have to talk to me in person. You just say it on Instagram. I might not see it. Can you imagine that this whole episode of this third podcast that we're doing is just talking about the fact that it's taken us a long time to do the podcast? (laughs) Yeah. Like we're only talking about within the podcast. Anyway. Okay. We're done that. Okay. This new... Uh, actually, this is we're not onto the new segment yet. Actually, let's just go to the new segment, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of I want to have some fun, okay? On Instagram, I asked people, um, what is their unpopular opinion, okay? Mm-hmm. And I told you about this. Oh yes. I when I when I thought about this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be so fun because I feel like these are gonna be contentious things, okay? Mm-hmm. And it turned out that a lot of people's unpopular opinions had to do with food. Oh. Yes, yes, had to do with food. So my question to you, Selah, is uh, maybe if you have an unpopular opinion about food, but maybe I'll just start mm-hmm. us off with one somebody else's suggestion here. Yeah. Okay, so somebody's first suggestion here and their first uh, you know, hot take mm-hmm. is a hot dog is a sandwich. Do you believe this is uh, correct? Okay, first of all, the fact that anyone even thought of this, there are so many better things to think about. Then whether I mean, a hot I, I, dog I, I'm is... kind of guilty, bro. I can ask them for their unpopular opinion. So I mean, they, they no, but like there are better unpopular opinions. Yeah, oh. the fact that this sorry I bumped the mic, but the fact <laughs> that the this mic. bumped the mic, <laughs> the fact that this came to their mind is ridiculous. Um, a hot dog is a sandwich. No, like it's just not. It's a it's a bun with meat in it. So if anything, it's more of a like taco. Honestly, I know that may sound weird, but the shape of it a little more like a, a taco. taco kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. That's like a hot I'm, take. either way it's weird okay. because it's like saying a taco is a sandwich. Like, no, it's a taco. That's like saying a burrito. He, here's is, what I here, bro is a smoothie. Bro. I don't bro. know. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, I'm gonna clip that, put that one on Instagram. <laughs> it's like what? Burrito <laughs> is a smoothie. Okay. Here's what here's another person, somebody saying cereal is soup. What is people's obsession with with ha- needing to have these big over like I-, I don't know overarching food groups like sandwich soup that they refuse to have separate food groups into mm-hmm. like its own thing cereal is its own thing okay mm-hmm. when people uh do oatmeal okay and they add some milk to it that's not cereal why yeah. are people calling that cereal when somebody has a hot dog that's not a sandwich that's a hot dog yeah like Bro, this is ridiculous. Like, just relax, okay? It's just I'm ready food. to re- walk it's off this set right dog. now. I'm so infuriated. It's just a hot dog. Have you it's had sushi before? Burrito that's a smoothie. Okay, have you had sushi before? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, lame. I want to. <laughs> lame sauce. I thought you were going to be the cultured one. You're supposed to be the cultured one among us. I'm the basic Nobody guy. Nobody ever gave me my character script, okay? That was the that was a job description. You were supposed to be the entertaining, cultured, like person that knew what was going on in the world that could speak I, to other people's experiences. I and have I was supposed the to knowledge. The basic guy that stays in his Imagine basement all the time. Imagine if I said, "What is Susie? Is she, she, is Susie? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What were you saying? Imagine if I said, "What is she? <laughs> can't Bro, wh- you can't say the word sushi. It's okay. It's okay. You're still learning how to talk. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> English is okay. My so you first haven't because somebody said somebody's known, unpopular yeah. opinion was sushi is nasty, and I couldn't. I can't speak to that. I've never had it, but I have mm-hmm. a good feeling that that might be the case. I feel like that's just wrong. I feel like like there's so many different kinds of sushi. Um, th- good job. <laughs> you did really good. Thank I'm you. I'm so proud of you. Well, don't be. Oh. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Do you know, do you understand why there's so much hate? People, somebody's uh, unpopular opinion said, I like pineapple on pizza. The -hmm. fact that this person believes this is an unpopular opinion. Um, this is just a sad world that we live in. You you you, like a pineapple on pizza? I have no problem with it. I don't Mm -hmm. understand why people ostracize pineapple being on pizza. Do you understand it? Uh, no, not really. Other than it's like the only fruit put on pizza. Tomato, I mean, bro. 
Yeah, there's so many. Tomato. There's so many foods. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I feel like it's a different, it's a very different, um, like, flavor than uh, anything else you'd put on a pizza. But other than that, like, it's just pizza. Like, you could put anything on pizza. The only thing I have against it is the fact that I get pepperoni mixed up with any other word that starts with p sometimes and <laughs> with pineapple wait, wait. set in the same context sometimes i could get them mixed up and so then i really confuse people and then Whoa, uh, but if they were not in the same context i'd be fine and i'd be understood i'm trying to think of the things now that the two kind of like i feel like there's people like that that i get confused that i mm. think are kind of the same person but i can't think of any on the spot but I, I know what you mean yeah i know what you mean okay this is somebody else's unpopular opinion i should not be judged for listening to non-christian music oh snap what what do you think about that uh yeah i feel like um judging i don't know i feel like if don't be judgmental <laughs> we are supposed to love people yeah and we are not supposed but to be it's like if somebody's listening to like clearly very sinful music um uh what's the word you deserve a little judgment (laughs) no not not judgment Um, just uh, help redirect them and help them see and then like find grace in god yeah that's a good take that's That's a good take and yeah i feel like there's just like a lot of just like silent judgment when it comes to music like if you hear that somebody listens to a certain uh, music artist you're like oh but like maybe they don't listen to all of their songs like it's not like they're their number one supporter like they'd give their life to that artist like no it's just like some of their songs they like that's true bro I, I firmly, okay, this is my tirade, okay? This is Isaac's soapbox, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay? I don't understand when people are like, you should only listen to Christian music. I'm like, okay, bro, what is Christian music? Yeah. What do you call Christian music? How many, What? Where, where are the criteria for Christian music? They give me a piece of paper that says you have to mention Jesus three times. Mm-hmm. You have to say hallelujah, hallelujah <laughs> multiple times. You got to say praise the Lord or you got to make some sort of analogy towards oceans, breeze, mountains, lakes. Oh, like what, what, what is the criteria here? I mean, that sounds like a perfect Christian song. Right because I, I hear so many uh, songs all the time, especially like indie folk, that kind of thing, where they're not saying anything bad they're just like maybe it's a love song maybe it's a little bit you know in their feels you know and and, but it's it's just exploring emotions and and things Mm -hmm. that you're going through and yeah they never mention god but does that mean it's secular music it's rotting your brain Mm -hmm. like i'm i don't because like i know i know so many uh christian like songs by like lesser known christian artists but they're still christian artists and they don't they're not that clearly christian but they're definitely not like secular but it's like i could also uh, and i could play that song and somebody could be like it could be a secular song by secular artist or a total christian song but they wouldn't really know because it's kind of just like a song Mm -hmm. you know yeah and it could be the same way for a secular song like it's just how you see it and you got to be it's why you're listening to it you know like I, i totally i think you're on the right path when you're like you got to be discerning. Obviously, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that whatever. It doesn't even matter what the song's about because it there's no differentiation. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I, but it just what I'm saying is that the lines that we've drawn are a little off base um, in terms of like something being Christian. Therefore, it is good and it is like wonderful to listen to mm-hmm. when in fact a lot of Christian music is actually uh, trash. And mm-hmm. it's not good. And it's and it's yeah. no more great artistry that glorifies God than something that maybe is quote unquote secular, but it actually like exemplifies good art. Um, mm-hmm. But you got to be discerning in that for yourself. That's mm-hmm. my take. OK, that's my unpopular opinion. Definitely. OK, so uh, here we go. Um, OK, now we got to go to the big squabbler submissions these are the questions that we got from people that uh, are all about fear are you ready to dig into the most vulnerable uh parts of our being and our past (laughs) no (laughs) okay okay well okay so somebody asked about fear how do you deal with stage fright i thought this was interesting because you've been on the stage quite a bit um i do have a past in the theater um when i was a young boy (laughs) and um so what is your what's your advice for somebody that's going through a stage fright that has stage fright do you have any thoughts about that if you don't Um, i can start yeah you you could start okay well when i was a young boy 11 12 um i would get on the stage in the theater i did um some musical theater for a little bit (laughs) See, this is so dumb Um, because I'm like, 
because I don't really know how I never really got over it. I was just so honed in to making sure I remembered all my lines. I was so focused on and other people's lines, too, because I was so nervous that they were going to forget or they were going to like screw it up. So I was like, I got to just remember all their stuff. So I think at least in that context, I was so like focused on what I had to do that I wasn't really as focused or or the fear wasn't really setting in of the other people watching me when I played basketball I had so much state like stage fright whatever Mm -hmm. like fright of fear of performing my hands would get so sweaty Mm -hmm. and on I would have a towel like my teammates would call me towel boy (laughs) because I (laughs) because I had a towel on my on the bench that I would go to every kind of break and wipe off my hands because my hands got so sweaty and on multiple occasions I would try to do a pass or like a shot sometimes and it would slip out of my hands because it was like they would put me in the game at the late at the game just to like wet the ball with all the sweat on my hands oh that's gross no I'm just totally kidding um wow that i that was weird um anyway (laughs) how did i deal with it i think ultimately i it was just trying to remember what would calm me down is like remembering the people in your life that don't care if you like Mm -hmm. screw up or if like they love you unconditionally they accept you like your identity isn't found in doing performing perfectly so trying to remind myself those truths Mm -hmm. i don't think i did a great job at doing that because i experienced a lot of anxiety but that's what i would try to do now like as i go on to speak at different places it's like okay okay god i'm just gonna give this to you Mm this fear to you you know yeah that's very good and i have a story i'm not sure how it uh, how helpful this story will be but i kind of think it's funny and goes along with it and one time i did actually in a dance performance did actually mess up but not in any like for not any part of the actual dance it's just i exited the stage before the lights went off and nobody else did because apparently we were told not to but you know i didn't hear that so i just exited and i think i made it worse because i tried before I was even totally off stage to get everybody else off stage with me because I thought they were the ones messing up just made a big scene it wasn't good um so yeah that was really embarrassing and I think I was only 10 there so it's not that was like four years ago um and how to get over a stage fright I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. You're still working through that. I don't know. I mean, that's reasonable. I feel like yeah. for dance performances, which is pretty much like the scariest thing I do, um, I just n- have all of the moves m- muscle memorized, so I don't really actually have to think about it. And by the time it's over, it's it's all fine. What is your biggest phobia? Fear. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say phobia. Like, uh, okay. Like, I would say my biggest phobia is arachnophobia, which is Mm. the fear of spiders or arachnids. Um, That's horrifying to me, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you, do are you scared of spiders? Uh, no, not, not really. You wouldn't be one of those sick people that would like own one. No. Good. Because those, I've seen those people on TikTok. There's this one girl that owns a, what do you call it? Like a wolf hunting spider because these spiders are like so big. They like murder, eat wolves for breakfast. How big are they? uh like bigger than my hand no yeah like this big like two hands that's ridiculous that's not okay dude imagine just like crawling and you like (laughs) dude it's frightening okay so anyway that's horrifying to me uh (laughs) okay do you have anything like that do you have like a weird phobia like you have claustrophobia or like fear of heights or uh, i don't like small places i really don't but i don't think i have like i'm not that afraid like i don't Okay. Well, I feel like, I don't know, I am. I feel like I'm one of those people that are like, I'm not that afraid of (laughs) something and then it happens. You just don't have to experience the fear that often. So you underestimate its power. True. Like, like being alone in a closet is fine. Like, I feel like, so I don't care always. It's just some places. Scary. What's your, what was your greatest fear as a kid? Hmm. Hmm. Well, lots of silence on this. I gotta <laughs> think. There's no time to think on a podcast. Well, see, he didn't even. He, you do have you all know your the, answers written down. Do probably, you want to know the perfectly questions? Perfectly crafted, and he just puts me on the spot here. So if I mess up, sometimes you wonder. You're not why. messing up. I just was. La- okay. Would you <laughs> like to know the questions before the podcast? Um. 
Because I feel like I don't know. it would I be feel, more. I, like, I feel like it's more fun to have a free flowing conversation. Yeah, I like it better. Okay, okay, but you okay. know, you craft all your answers so perfectly. I don't. I don't have any of them crafted. I do know the answers, but no, okay. No. Anyway, okay. So uh, biggest, biggest fear, fear as a kid, or just uh, a fear as a kid that you can think of. I don't know the okay. fear of embarrassing myself. Oh, I still have that fear. Though. Okay, so. embarrassing yourself. Yeah, no. Was it in context to anything in particular, or just generally? Other people. <laughs> oh, okay. Obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that. I think my greatest fear as a kid, see, I wasn't, I haven't really thought about it too much. Uh, I mean, as a teenager, I'm going to say teenager was mm -hmm. driving. Uh, I yeah. hated learning to drive. That was so stressful. Like there was a period of like six months where I was just so anxious about driving, driving with the instructor, mm -hmm. instructor, like getting my license, mm -hmm. license, taking the test, like all that stuff. Yeah. I was so relieved when that was all done. That yeah. was a lot. What are the things that you tell yourself when you're when you're scared, when you're fearful that that maybe make you feel better or that like bring your heart towards God or like are there particular things that you say to yourself that you can mm -hmm. think of? Um, I think for me, if I'm scared, usually fear um, kind of I, I don't know uh, shows itself in the in the way of anxiety. It's like fear about mm -hmm. the future usually or something like that. Yeah. And generally, the way that I try to, like, combat it or address it is not necessarily be like, oh, like, you be angry at myself for being scared or like, oh, yeah. you shouldn't be scared. God's together and try to, like, shame yourself almost. Yeah. More like, okay, well, I am my, like, my heart, my emotions are trying to protect me. They don't want me mm -hmm. to be hurt. They don't want me to be embarrassed or unprepared. So they're trying to motivate me towards, like... Um, doing good stuff or like, mm -hmm. you know, being productive or or making sure the future is going to be OK or trying mm -hmm. to keep things under control. But it's just like for me, it's like, OK, well, I, I, that's the way I feel. And I can kind of let those things out and be OK. I, I feel anxious. I feel fearful. But I'm going to give that to God and God, I want to trust you in this circumstance because you know what's best and as simple as that is i think mm -hmm. if we could actually begin to repeat that to ourselves constantly then we'd actually begin to believe it yeah you know like what can you think of anything in particular that you that you say to yourself even just like just something simple but mm -hmm. but that you say to yourself when you're fearful or anxious um that that helps you in any way um probably just that god's in control god's in control yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing because we say that a lot, but if we could actually believe it, how would our lives change? Mm -hmm. How would we like live differently? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know, man. This is kind of a deep episode. We're coming to the end of it. Thank you for joining me once again, Sayla. I know your schedule mm -hmm. is so busy <laughs> and you are, uh, but, but everyone loves you on this podcast. So I'm just like trying to get you in the studio again so we can shoot. Once again, guys, if you want to see the second episode we did, the hidden episode, um, it is on Patreon for all of our patrons and uh, you can watch it right now if you just sign up for any level of Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, are you making, do it, talking to the camera in somewhere? Are you making signals to the camera? I am. Uh, you guys can watch this episode too on the Daily Disciple channel um, because it's going out on all audio podcast platforms, but it's also on video. At least every second episode is. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I guess, Sayla, you want to close? Thank you for watching, Scrabblers. See you later.